Yesterday we talked about the right path. Today we're going to take a look at why we should be on this right path. And we're going to see both Peter and Paul in Scripture teach us about the power of the Holy Spirit that had been inspired to them why we should be walking in a righteous way. Thanks for joining Second Peter chapter 3, we're going to look at just the latter part of the chapter, verses 11 through 18. But if you read in prior, uh, read the first part of chapter 3, I encourage you to go back. It does speak about the return of Christ. It also speaks about how God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. It is God's desire. It is his will that everyone come to know him, but he doesn't force himself upon us. He doesn't force us to come to know him. He gives us that option and that choice. But even as the laws of science and physics teach us to every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction in life. It is that way, isn't it? Even in the spiritual realm. There is a price for every action. So think about that. As we go into scripture today, where God is not forcing himself, he's not even forcing you today. You're not being forced to go and to listen to a teaching today. You're not being forced to go and read and study his word or to seek him out. It is by your choice. And by your choice, you will be rewarded as scripture teaches us. In the word, there is great reward for those who seek the Lord. Today, here in Second Peter chapter 3, let's take a look. After it has spoken about the return of Christ and how God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, let's begin and pick up here at verse 11. It says, Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, talks about how there will come an end to the world and that, that it will be uh, destroyed with fervent heat, this whole world. So meditate on that for a minute, that this entire world, everything and everything physical that you see is no longer going to be here. Even our physical bodies, even though we are believers, we're going to be given a new one. This body is going to dissolve with the fervent heat when this entire world is destroyed. One day, that is going to happen. And that is also mentioned here in that passage uh, in Second Peter chapter 3. So it says, Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons, i.e. to be in all holy conversation and godliness. So what manner of persons should we be? Which means how should we be living? What should we be living after? What should we be living like? He says, because of the things that you know are coming, live in a right way. It goes on there to say in all holy conversation and godliness and the things that you say and the things that you do, they matter. Verse 12, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Notice that upon this earth that there is both people living in a righteous way and an unrighteous way. Primarily in an unrighteous way, as scripture records that wide is the gate that leadeth to destruction. And narrow is the way that leadeth into life everlasting. And few there be that find that path and that way. Uh, and so these are things that we know in scripture. And so because there is evil upon this earth and taking place here, we know that there's a new heaven and a new earth that's being prepared for us. Jesus, before he ascended into heaven, he looked at his people and he said, As I go to prepare a place for you and where I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again 
and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. There is a place that Jesus has gone off to prepare for his people, and he will come again. And he says, receive you unto myself. And we know that what uh, the term that we use, rapture, what that is, is this the rapture of the church, the bringing back up to him of the church. We're not gonna, we are going to meet him in the air. There's a confusing thing that sometimes believers don't understand is that when Jesus comes back for his people, he's going to meet us in the air. But there is going to come a time that he sets his foot back on the earth. That's at the end of the seven-year tribulation. There are two different uh, events. Now, we know that the wrath of God has been reserved for the wicked, as recorded in Scripture. The wrath of God has been reserved for the wicked. And, and if you are in Christ, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, as recorded in Scripture. That is not reserved for you, in other words. So that wrath of God that comes out in those seven years of tribulation is not for those of us who are in Christ Jesus. We're going to have already been gone and taken up to meet our Lord in the air. But there is going to come a time when Jesus sets foot back down upon the earth and it's going to come uh, to an end of the age or at the end of the world. And everything then, after he reigns for a thousand years, is going to be dissolved with fervent heat. There's going to be a, de a desolation. It's, it's going to be done with. This whole earth is going to be dissolved with fervent heat. And we need to consider that in our lives today, especially... Uh, on both sides. If you're a believer, one day everything you see is going to be gone. So how are you living? Are you living like this world is really going to come to an end? Are you living like this world is all that matters to you? And if you're not a believer, you're lost, you're undone, and you don't know the Savior, one day this world is going to come to an end. It will dissolve with fervent heat and everything that you're working towards only your eternity will matter at that time when you're gone think about that be ready to leave this world be ready to spend an eternity somewhere because there's only one of two places it's heaven or hell and in order to know Christ, all you must do is ask him. He says, Any, anything you ask him for believing, then you shall receive. He says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, which giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not. And he says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Speaking about the Lord Jesus, he is the Son, the only begotten Son of the true and living God. John three sixteen. for God so loved the world that he gave. His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, let's continue um, and read here why there is such an emphasis on us living holy and living in a right way. Verse 13 says, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. We know the new heaven and new earth, only righteousness will be there. Only righteousness will dwell there. Verse 14, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found in, of him in peace, without spot and blameless, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given to, unto him, hath written unto you. Peter is making mention of Paul's writings here. Verse 16, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and un unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction they're wrestling against the truth of the word of god there are people that don't understand they're wrestling against the word of god they do not believe it they want they doubt it they don't accept it as truth and that's what peter's mentioning here it says verse 17 and ye therefore beloved seeing ye know these things before so you know the things that are going to happen. You know the things that are coming. 
beloved, he's talking about the believer, beware lest ye also being led away with error of the wicked fall from your steadfastness. Don't be led away into Satan's schemes, believer. This is speaking about the believer. Verse 18, but grow in grace in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Grow in grace, which means to grow in the favor of God. To continue to excel, to grow, to thrive. That's what this means, to grow in grace. You know, grace is unmerited favor of God, having God's favor upon you. And we've been given that in Jesus Christ, but we can grow in it as well. Notice that. That is pretty amazing. Now, I want to go look at one uh, verse that is uh, has been inspired by the Holy Spirit to the Apostle Paul. And that's in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58. <coughs> Excuse me. By the way, uh, those of you who have been listening and you're hearing some snoring in the background, uh, that is my son, Gage. He's 11 years old. He has uh, Down syndrome and autism. He's an awesome kid. But he, and anyway, he is sleeping in here where I do my recording. And uh, <laughs> anyway, he is snoring over there. I will show him to you here at the end of the teaching today. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Let's look at what... When we're gonna, what we're gonna see is, is some of the things that we read that Peter had written. We're gonna also see some similarities, some great similarities in things that Paul had written. But we're only actually gonna look at one verse. First Corinthians chapter fifteen and verse fifty-eight says this: Therefore, my beloved brethren, notice again that this is written to believers. This is written to the brethren. This has been inspired by the Holy Spirit of God. So God has written this through men, right? We know that holy men of old were inspired by the Holy Spirit to write scripture. That's where we get it from. And so Paul is the one who's been inspired here and it's written to the brethren. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Oh my goodness, we're seeing this, this great comparison to what Peter has said about being steadfast. And the reason that we should be steadfast is because that one day this earth is going to dissolve with fervent heat. It's going to come to an end. But for now, you still have time to be living unto the Lord. You see, there is going to come a time when our life ends or this or the the church is raptured or this world comes to an end and it's all going to be done what did jesus say before he left and ascended back into heaven he says go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father son and the holy spirit teaching them to observe all things Whatsoever I have commanded, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world, or the end of the age. That's recorded there in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. Think about this. That the reason that we should be living in a holy way, in a righteous way, is because we should be abounding in the works of the Lord. We should be steadfast in his work. And we see this as mentioned in Peter, in Peter, 2 Peter chapter 3 that we read. And now by Paul in 1 Corinthians 15. Looking again at verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, which means continue. Don't quit. Unmovable. Don't, don't be shaken by Satan's schemes. You don't have to be. Remember that we are more than overcomers to those of us who are in Christ Jesus. We can quench every fiery dart of the wicked. Resist the devil and he will flee from, flee from you. Be unmovable. Be unshaken by him. It says, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Have you ever been uh, teased or criticized for, for doing for the Lord or living for the Lord? Right? 
man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. And so God knows the reason why you're doing the things for him that you're doing. It's, sometimes it, it can be for others to see and for others to think something more of you, but God knows the true reason. And if you're really doing it as a heart unto the Lord, as a service unto the Lord, God knows that. But have you ever been criticized for it? For living in a right way? Look at what it says. Show these people this verse if they are believers too. It says, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always. Notice that. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. It means always living to serve the Lord, to work for the Lord. That everything that we're doing should be for Him. It might be through your job. It might be through your parenting. It might be through whatever, your ministry, but it sh we should be always abounding in the work of, of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Have you ever felt like that the things that you're doing there's, for the Lord and you're just not seeing the fruit? God says, you know what? Your labor is not in vain. It always holds value, even if you don't see it in the carnal. Know that your labor for the Lord is always highly valuable. It is not in vain. Think about these things, being steadfast and unmovable. Back over in St. Peter chapter 3, we're reminded that the Lord is going to come back. Jesus is going to come back for his people. And then also there's going to be a seven-year tribulation. This earth is going to dissolve with fervent heat. Everything's going to come to an end. And there will be no time for change then. It will all be done. Let us be mindful of that as believers, that the reason that we should be living in this right way, in this right path, in a righteous and holy way, is to be abounding in the work of the Lord, which is to be, what, reaching the lost, as taught to us in Matthew chapter 28. When Jesus ascended back into heaven, he said, this is the reason I need you to carry the torch. I need you to carry on my work. I need you be an ambassador for me. Think about this. This is a wonderful thought. Well, as I mentioned to you all, my son, he ended up waking up. He's over here awake now, and I will show him to you guys that are listening today. This is my son, Gabe. Thank you all for joining today. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe for others to be able to see our teachings uh, as they drop in on YouTube Monday through Thursday. God bless you all. Okay, can we say bye? Say bye-bye. 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 Being shy.